so many of us are waiting for an RTX 40 series card that doesn't cost $800 or more. Well, we should be seeing the RTX 4070 on April 13th. Now, to be clear though, this is a leak. This is not official. Uh, however, let's get into why I think this is a pretty solid leak. Now, I'm seeing this reported by videocards.com, but they are getting this from a tweet from Hongxing2020 on Twitter uh, saying that uh, 4070 coming in on 413. Now, according to videocards.com, this same source on Twitter has leaked previous G NVIDIA GPU release dates accurately in the past, which obviously lends a lot of credence to this possibly being actually true. In addition to that, videocards.com themselves have previously leaked this GeForce desktop embargo slide, um, saying GeForce RTX 4070 and the on-shelf date, let me get out of the way here, on-shelf date coming in in April, although this one did not have a specific, a specific, <laughs> did not have a specific date. So these things line up with April, uh, you know, April 13th being reasonable, a leaker with a good track record of this type of information, and additionally, uh, we do know that NVIDIA's Jensen himself will be delivering a keynote at GTC um, on March 21st, and we know that um, at GDC, we're going to be seeing um, Cyberpunk 2077 showing off its RT Overdrive mode finally, bringing path tracing into Night City presented by NVIDIA, this coming in on Wednesday, March 22nd. So we've got a keynote here on the 21st, keynote here, uh, well, I mean, a big, big ray tracing update on the 22nd. Remember that we saw RT Overdrive first revealed with the launch of the 4000 series, but we just haven't got it into the release build of the game. Um, additionally, we're also seeing uh, articles that the um, RTX 30 series Founders Edition cards are vanishing from retail listings from their official uh, retailers like Cowcott Land. Uh, you can still find them for sale at Best Buy, but it looks like not for sale online anymore, picking up locally and they're not really available online. I guess what I'm saying is there's a lot of signs point to the 3000 series winding down and us finally actually getting uh, the RTX 4070 and lower GPUs. So I think that there's a good chance we will actually see this on April 13th, but um, you know, can't 100% confirm that. Now, if we actually do get this, what sort of performance and pricing might we get into? Well, this is where I'm gonna move into more speculative, but there have been a lot of rumored specs for the 4070. The current rumors are pointing, about, first of all, what are we looking at here? This is a videocards.com. By the way, all my sources will be linked in the description today. Um, so we have the 4070 Ti, which we know the actual specs for because it's out. And then the 4070 rumored specs, a little bit of 4060 Ti rumors here as well, though I'm gonna be focusing on this. It's rumored to have, here's how it's the same as the 4070 Ti. It has the same 12 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory running on the same 192-bit bus, giving it 404, uh, 504 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. However, where the differences mainly come in is far fewer CUDA cores, 5,888 versus 7,680. And then that gives it a, a here's also, um, the rumors also point to having a lower base clock and boost clock. Now, this seems weird to me because I feel like on previous GPUs, I've seen the the models with a cut down die with fewer CUDA cores on it able to clock higher to make up some of that performance gap. Uh, but anyway, the current rumors do point to a lower base clock and boost clock compared to the 4070 Ti, so make of that what you will. They're both coming in on the 8104 GPU, although the 4070 Ti has the full 400 version, whereas this will be a 250 or 251 model on the 470. Now, um, if these uh, clock speeds actually work out with these CUDA cores and all that, uh, this would come out to 29 teraflops of FP32 compute versus the 40 teraflops on the 4070 Ti. So if I now bust out a calculator, um, this means that we would have about 77% of the CUDA cores of the uh, 4070 Ti. And the, if the teraflops calculation actually worked out, we would have about 72.5% of the 
of the FP32 performance. Now, again, like I said, this is based on leaked and rumors. This might not end up coming out to be true. However, let's go a little bit further here. So if we pull up a relative performance chart, uh, this is the tech power up one. And the reason that I'm pulling up this one is because the tech power up GPU database allows you to click on any GPU, set it as a 100% baseline, and then they show all the other GPUs relative performance to that one as a percentage scale. Now, I will mention that this is not always 100% accurate, and depending on the game that you're looking at, all of that, but this is always fairly accurate. It gives us a good ballpark figure. And so here's what I'm looking at. If we set the 4070 Ti as the baseline, I'm looking for what, which GPUs would perform at about this level, right? Uh, somewhere in this, you know, 75-ish percent of the performance of the 4070 Ti. Well, the RTX 3070 Ti is about 70% of the performance of a 4070 Ti, according to this relative performance chart. Again, it's not perfect. The 3070 coming in at about 66%. So this does look like it is going to be better than a 3070 Ti, but not by all that much. Uh, it looks like it's fairly comparable to, you know, like an RX 6800 and might be slower in rasterized performance than a 6800 XT. Uh, or an RTX 3080. Now, where this, I think, is relevant is when we start talking pricing, right? Because, okay, the RTX 3070 launched with a $500 MSRP, and this is the direct successor to that. Um, the 3070 Ti came in with at $600 and was widely considered um, a terrible value scaling over the base model 3070 because it isn't that much faster, but cost $100 more. Uh, and then the 3080 came in with a $700 MSRP, although admittedly it was very hard to find for that price. But this is, uh, is interesting because we know our 4070 Ti is $800, right? So the 4070 Ti is $800. The 3070 was $500. And Remember, the 3070 Ti was $600. They went with a $200 price bump from the 3070 Ti to the 4070 Ti with the generational uplift, right? Okay, now, so are we gonna expect a $200 price bump from the 3070 to the 4070? Because that would put it at $700, which is the same MSRP as the original 3080, which according to the leaked specs we're seeing, uh, I'm expecting the 40, you know, the 4070 to be slower than a 3080, right? <laughs> okay, I mean, if the leaked specs end up being true, maybe we'll be surprised and pleasantly so. Um, now, if it came in at $600, that would be matching the price of the 3070 Ti's original MSRP and looks like it would be slightly faster um, for the same MSRP. And that's more of what I'm expecting. So if you want my guess, I'm gonna guess that we're gonna see the 4070 come in at around $600 MSRP. So $100 bump up, up off the previous generation, I would expect a lot of the uh, you know, AIB cooler model cards to come in closer to the $700 price point and kind of split more of that gap. Um, but we'll see what happens. Um, if, if, if they aren't able to sell enough at the, those price points, we'll see. But in other words, I'm not holding my breath for some amazing value proposition. What I'm guessing is, you know, it'll come in priced like a 3070 Ti, offer a little bit more rasterized performance, but it will have better power efficiency because of the newer architecture. And it will have, you know, features like DLSS3 frame generation and all of that. So there will be at least, you know, some advantages, but this is similar to what we're seeing with like a 4070 Ti, which came out uh, a little more expensive than a 3080 did, um, a little bit faster with, uh, you know, better power efficiency, that sort of stuff. Anyway, we do have some other articles we can talk about today. Um, how about the 4090 getting silently updated to a uh, AD102-301 die instead of a 300 die? What's up with that? Well, it's not that big of a deal. Um, it looks like the change is just allowing AIB partners to reroute the voltage comparat comparator? Comparator? Comparator. Whatever. From the GPU to the board itself. I'll be honest, I'm not sure if that would, I don't think that's a big deal. Does anybody know if that would really matter at all for the end user? I don't think so, unless you're doing some weird overclocking thing. I don't know. Anyway, uh, 
In other news, AMD says it's possible to develop an NVIDIA RTX 4090 direct competitor with RDNA 3 GPUs, but they choose not to. <laughs> now, whether or not this is true, what this is getting at is their 7900 XTX is priced and performance-wise a competitor to the 4080, and AMD was very very clear out of the gate that that was their, their target. They were competing with the 4080, and they were coming in at the $1,000 price point with better than 4080 performance, at least in rasterization, and a lower price tag. It was not designed to compete with the 4090, although a lot of people leading up to the launch wanted it to. They're just saying that the, well, let's just go to their direct quote. So this is coming from an interview. This is reported at WCCFTech.com, tech, but this is apparently translated from an interview with IT Media. Um, but the direct quote is that technically it's possible to develop a GPU with specs that compete with theirs, to, speaking of the, the 4090 from NVIDIA. However, the GPU developed in this way was introduced to the market as a graphics card with a TDP of 600 watts and a reference price of $1,600 and was accepted by general PC gaming fans. After thinking about it, we chose not to adopt such a strategy. Um, they're targeting the $1,000 price point, which is considered to be the upper price assumed by high-end users among general PC gaming fans. They're basically saying that the, the general PC gaming fans consider a $1,000 upper limit as what's maybe reasonable, and they wanted to target that price point. Now, whether they really could have competed with the uh, 4090 performance, uh, who knows, but this is their uh, official statement in the interview. But that, but all that also might put some doubts on people saying that they're still going to come out with a 4090 competitor at some point. Um, I, I don't know, they're, they're, unless it came in at a lower, like they're saying that they don't want to go above that thousand dollar price point. At least that's what they're saying. Anyway, um, so AMD's Radeon 780M integrated RDNA 3 GPU on the other end of RDNA 3 news, rather than one that could compete with the 4090. How about we talk about some integrated graphics? Apparently, it's um, the 780M has been tested by Golden Pig Upgrade, which is a Chinese tech reviewer, and he's showing a uh, a Time Spy score. Now, if this is true, it is breaking a 3,000 graphics score with a score of 3,003 which is significantly better than some of the other results we had seen previously. Now that looks like it's due to the faster memory. This test was done on LPDDR5-6400 with an unknown power configuration. And this does bring it really close to a, a GTX 1650 Ti levels of performance, which is pretty interesting. Now, um, the previous scores with the 780M were done on slower memory with DDR5-5600, and it is noted in the article that this a APU should be able to officially support up to LPDDDR5X7500. And uh, if you guys are unaware, integrated graphics rely on the memory of the rest of the system. So a lot of times the memory speeds are actually the bottleneck uh, for the uh, integrated graphics. So it would be interesting to see how fast this could be on DDR5X7500. Uh, so anyway, uh, interesting to see how this kind of mobile performance will go, although uh, WCCF Tech is reporting on another review by Golden Pig Upgrade again, I believe. Um, and this one is talking about the Ryzen 7 7745HX Dragon Range a laptop. Uh, if you're not aware, the Dragon Range laptops are basically the CPUs that are basically the desktop CPUs, but put into a mobile f form factor for a very high-powered laptop. Um, uh, apparently, this review is putting it on par with Intel 16-core Raptor Lake HX, but consuming much lower power, which is uh, which is something to think about in the desktop space, but is even more important in the mobile space uh, with your power constraints. Uh, in those form factors. Anyway, I'm not going to get into all of the details here, but I, like I said, all of my links will be in the description uh, below if you want to take a closer look at that one. I want to mention AM5 motherboard pricing. It's looking like uh, the ASRock B650M did go up for pre-sale for $125. And that's good news because a lot of people's hesitation to jump onto the AM5 platform has been the high motherboard cost, but we are now seeing a B650M coming down to 125. So progress is being made on that pricing. Now in other motherboard news, I just find this board really interesting. Check this guy out guys. This is the back, but do you see all the connectors? Power connectors, power connectors, uh, your head side, USB, all of that. The connectors are on the back. The connectors are on the back, guys. I think that's awesome. Here's what the front looks like. This is uh, 
Uh, an Asus Tough uh, motherboard. The specific model is escaping me, so let me scroll up here. It is the B760M BTF motherboard from Asus. And again, getting really interesting design there with the connectors on the back. So uh, again, having the connectors on the back is uh, going to require a compatible case. So you would need a case with cutouts uh, or something to allow you to access those connectors, but it would be interesting to see the types of builds uh, that could be done with such a uh, with such a design. Is this something that's been done before and I'm just unaware of it, or is this like a totally new thing? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, I should also report that uh, if you noticed much lower 3D Mark Time Spy scores on the latest Radeon drivers, that apparently is happening to about 3% of users on the latest drivers. And um, this is official from 3D Mark themselves. Uh, they said they were unable to reproduce the issue themselves, but they talked to AMD, and AMD apparently can reproduce this internally. And so 3D Mark is pretty sure that this is probably a driver issue. Again, uh, 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 seems to be affecting about 3% of users. And so if you're chasing 3D Mark scores right now, you would be best served by rolling back to the previous uh, drivers or just not updating to these ones. Uh, but again, as far as we can tell, this is just affecting 3D Mark and not, uh, not actual performance in other games or anything like that. Uh, the last thing I'll leave you with is it looks like we're gonna be getting another game with direct storage. Uh, previously, it was just Forspoken. It was the first game to launch with uh, direct storage, and to my knowledge, is still the only one. We're now seeing a headline from WCCF Tech that Hunt Showdown, which, yes, is five years old, but is going to get an update which will uh, add direct storage as well as HDR and AMD's FSR 2.1. So, pretty exciting to see that. Now let me know what you guys think about all this RTX 4070 business or any of the other news articles in the comment section. What would be an acceptable price to you for an RTX 4070? And what do you think about these, uh, these stats? Uh, let me know, and I hope all of you have an excellent day.